Brandon. Cat. You are going to tutor me. I'm going to take you for a tour. A magic carpet ride. Magic carpet ride. Starring the Ranchilio Class 7. We're going to get small, get inside the machine. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, anyway, this is, what it, this is what it looks like with the, uh, the top. we got top and um, front and sides removed of this guy. we got about as much as you can get without disassembling the machine. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, why don't you take me through what all these different components are and how they work. Okay. So, this is what the internal of your machine looks like. It looks all pretty on the outside. Mm -hmm. and really, it's just a whole amount of wires and copper tubes. Okay. Um... Boiler, stainless steel boiler that's inside of here. Copper tubes mm -hmm. goes through. These two buggers here are what's called your heat exchange. Okay. So that is how we flash heat the water. Okay. Right now, of course, we're just looking at the top of the machine. Mm -hmm. um, coming out of it, it's pretty straightforward. You can see a copper tube goes up the steam arm. Okay. This right here is actually, I can't see where it's going to. I don't remember. That's going down to my... Um, Exchange, isn't it? Where's it going to? No, it's coming right over to here. So that's my pressure. That's my electronic pressure stack. Oh, okay. Um, this right here is going into our hot water. So hot water solenoid is how we get hot water out of the front of the machine. Mm -hmm. This is a water level probe. So you can actually put that on. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to just take this off, it would say, I got no water and start filling itself. Put it back like on. Like crazy. Start, yep, it'll just go and go and go. Okay. This is my anti-suction valve. Oh. Still got steam inside the boiler. Mm-hmm. Uh, this top here, once again, is something I cannot see. I'm guessing it's going to a gauge somewhere. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it looks like it's doing. It looks like a gauge. That's our steam gauge. Yeah. So that's letting me know in, in the front gauge up here mm -hmm. what, what's going on, how many bars of pressure is inside of there. Okay. Um, this right here, which you can't see, is our safety valve. So this is heating the element goes bad. The thing with the black bad. rubber around it? Yep. Oh, okay. So too much pressure inside the boiler. It's got to release itself. That's our safety valve. Okay. And then this one right here is the same as the other side going up to my steam arm. Okay. Um, so that's everything to the top of this boiler. Like I said, it's it's pretty easy because you can kind of see where everything's going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what matters more is going to be kind of some of this stuff up here and then the stuff down below. Okay. Um, so generally on these tours, I start people, it's machines, espresso machines are very simple. It's, it's literally, all we're doing is tracing water and electricity through a machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as a tech, when we're diagnosing these, the whole idea is that we there's a whole web of water and electricity points. Mm -hmm. And if something goes wrong, it's a failure at one of those points. And the goal is we got to figure out where does it stop. Okay. So I break things down basic. I start from the beginning. I say, let's get right to where the water's coming in from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go down a little wire. You can kind of hear it from there, but that's our water level in right here. Okay. Okay. The first point these things always go to is the pump. And that's right there. That's our little pump right back there. Okay. So water's always going to come in. And that's the thing that makes a lot of noise back there when you hit them. Every time you hit a group head, mm -hmm. um, water's then going to head back out and it's going to go into our block. Okay. Um, some machines, these are in a little more convenient place. A lot of times they're up front. Mm -hmm. This one's way towards the back, but it's an easy machine to get into in the back. I'm like, meow. Okay. Can you see it? Get I can't the zoom barely on. see it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you have water going in and we're going to go to a block. And this block splits it two ways. Mm -hmm. So you can see one way goes forward, one way goes out yeah. or straight. Okay, so let's deal with one, one we can see right now, which is this one right here. So water's going to come out from here. This is what's called our inlet line. So okay. this fills our steam boiler. It has nothing to do with the heat exchangers. Um, and so when we talk about calling it a single boiler heat exchange machine, it is still, a heat exchange machine is still two boilers, mm -hmm. okay? It's, it's a boiler that goes through another boiler. The heat exchange does not have a heating element inside of it. But you have to always remember that because they are separate water sources. Mm -hmm. They're, it, it all starts at the same point, but that's why we split it. We're going to split it off, and now I'm going to send water up one way and water up another way. Okay. So you can see there's this black box right here that this is going to. Mm -hmm. Hey, that helps. Hey. Black box? Yeah. Um, that's called our inlet solenoid. This is what gets turned on when we were up here with this little water level probe. When this thing goes off and says, I have no water or I'm low on water, mm -hmm. it sends a signal to this little black box, which is called the inlet solenoid. Okay. The box itself is actually called a coil. It's a magnet. Got it. It's going to open up and it's going to let water in. And you're not going to be able to see this, but it just basically goes up and into the boiler. Okay. Okay. That's all that does. So it's just pulling fresh water from your main line into the boiler. Into the boiler. In, to, to into the steam it. part of the boiler. Yep. Into just the steam part. Okay. And really, that's only that only dissipates when you're steaming. 
or running hot water out of here. That's the only way you lose water inside of a steam boiler. Okay. The second side is what's more important. So this side runs us to what's called our heat exchange side. So this is where we're gonna get water actually making our drinks. Okay. It's gonna come straight out. It's got a little um, vacuum breaker basically just if there's overpressure, it can push out that way, which goes to our drainage tube. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna run water straight up. So you can see it split off and go up. If you come all the way to the top here, see this little one here? This copper tube is what that copper tube was down there. Okay. So now we run into what's called our flow meters. Now flow meters are only on volumetric units. They're not on semi-automatic units because this is, this is actually what does the work. When we say volumetric and we say it programs for two ounces, it doesn't program for two ounces. It programs this flow meter to tell it how many times to spin. Okay. So two ounces at its flow meter might mean 754 spins. I see. Um, if you don't need to worry about that, this would just be fused together mm -hmm. and then we would just send water directly down. And it would just be like off and on, like you initiate it. Yep. You turn okay. it on, you turn it off. Okay. Um, but on your volumetric units, we have flow meters. So it's got little arrows in, out. So basically water's going to come in. This one happens to be for the left group head. In, out, and then from there, we're going to go back down to the bottom of this machine. Okay. So now we still, we still, it's still cold water at this point, right? <laughs> okay. From there, we're gonna come right into here. Now, if you remember the top, I showed you that heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. This is the bottom of the heat exchanger. So again, you picture a cylinder going all the way through that steam boiler. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna introduce cold water right into here. Get these out of your way. Um, so that's cold water that's gonna go in. It's gonna go into the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. I'll get to what this line is in a second. Water's gonna go straight up through the boiler to come out right here mm -hmm. okay so I could pop that if I wanted to get into it basically okay so now that water is then going to come right through here into right up a into a group head. head okay so the group head which looks like this on the top but it's also the part that you put the porta filter mm -hmm. in at the bottom okay that's interesting because I guess I would have thought the flow meter was bef after it was hot you know, well, so I like that it's kind of cool that it's like it's just you know that it's like sort of do, to some extent sort of dosing the the cold wa water. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, so it really it doesn't matter where you would put this because at the end of the day it's just a break point. We have pressure. Yeah. Once we release that pressure, it's going to keep going. Mm -hmm. The problem you have, you will not find a lot of components after the hot water part. Um, it's really hard to get components that can handle. 200 and yeah. something degrees worth of water. So we're going to run cold water in, mm -hmm. and it comes into here, ends up in this group head. Yeah. At this point, and you can touch this, it's hot if you don't trust me. I don't want to. <laughs> <I'm> scared. <laughs> so at this point here, right now what we're doing is we're heating this group head, this big gigantic block. We okay. have to keep this up to temperature. Um, it doesn't matter how hot anything is through here. If your group head is 60 degrees, mm -hmm. by the time you ran this nice 198 degree water to a 60 degree group head, mm -hmm. you have a 60 degree espresso. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yummy. So we have to cycle it. When it's not in use, it's going to then go straight through. It's going to okay. hit this one, and we're going to send water back down. And that's what that guy is about. Yep. So you can even feel there again, hot, hot, hot. But if I feel right here, nice and cold. Oh, okay. Right there is cold. Right there so it's cycling hot. through the whole time you're not using or initiating that shot. That yep. water is just kind of, it's just going very around slowly. and around and around. Very slowly, yes. But okay. it is. It's, it's got this very slow trickle right that always is keeping it going. That way you don't have stagnant water. If it was just stagnant water, all that heat would just keep rising. Yeah. And so you'd have 240 degree group heads. It would okay. just burn everything. Got it. So now we dump this water back in and it's going to enter through the chamber. You can kind of see the breakup right through there. Mm -hmm. And it's going to mix with this cold water. Now this also aids in the process because if I'm sending cold water into the actual group head itself, mm -hmm. um, now I'm, I'm getting it hot. I'm taking you know all this hot water right here. I'm getting it hot right from the point it comes in. Mm -hmm. And so it's this just it's ever collect ending more. cycle. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, and if we were to go over to the other group head, it's the exact it's the same, same story. thing. Exact same thing, just left versus right. Okay. Um, and then there's all the brains over here. There is all the brains. On, the, on your side, huh? You <laughs> I see how you are. I didn't want to bring mm, no. it up. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ranchilio does something that's kind of cool, though. So they have their little C lever. Okay. Um, it's spelled C space lever for clever. 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 Um, this allows the push pull. So the, um, basically, same type of functionality that you'll see on other machines, except for theirs, it's down, up, down, up. Okay. Um, you'll actually see, I don't know if you can see it, every time I hit this, 
See how it just like jumps up there? Mm -hmm. It's a little anti-suction valve basically that's there to equalize that pressure for you, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a nice little thing. But basically, you'll hear the terms rebuilding of steam arms. Okay. What that is is all inside of here. There's a series of gaskets in here that mm -hmm. eventually go bad from all the... On and off. Yep, all that. Okay. Um, it, this is why it's, it's weird. You know, people get scared of the process. Really, it's pop this nut off. I can take this out, and mm -hmm. then I, once I get inside of here, it's a couple gaskets. Okay. Um, it's a lot of gaskets that's inside of there, so you, you do have to kind of know what you're doing. But when you hear like just rebuild the steam arm, we're not. You know, a lot of people get this image that it's this, you know, this whole thing all. Or the way that it's down. like this, the the wand itself. Yep, that is that okay. whole thing. This. So that's is it's all really addressing up there. And typically, when you want to rebuild your steam arms, is when you start seeing stuff like that. But when I'm not holding it, just all the time. Yep. A little and bit of steam coming out. You know, even if you don't own one of these, you've gone to a shop and seen it. It's just <laughs> <snatch> it. <laughs> and so it just means that there's been a lot of wear and tear on those gaskets and O-rings, and so you just got to replace them out so everything seals correctly. Yep, just get them okay. replaced out. Cool. Um, other than that, that's it. It's a very, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty simple machine when you get inside of there. There's not as much um, internals. It's really a lot of uh, wires running around. <laughs> um, and getting into trouble. <laughs> yep, and obviously you saw your motor underneath here. Yeah, cool. That's the machine. All right, so that is the internal tour of the Ranchelio Class 7. Thank you very much, Brandon. Thanks, Scott.